Um, but what's special about this one, as you say, is the direct sequel. So it, the original character of Leatherface, as he would be in the world of 2021, uh, amongst millennials and Gen Zs, and the film has a really fresh and current feel to it, and it's sort of a really interesting juxtaposition between that original character and the world we now live in. There is a wonderful... The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. After you stop screaming, you'll start talking about it. Gosh, <laughs> I've forgotten about that trailer. Now, the chainsaw-toting Leatherface is back. Netflix is, is rebooting the franchise uh, with a sequel directed by David Blue Garcia, which came out yesterday. So Harlow is a ghost town. We have a vision for this place. All it needs is young blood. I don't want to live here. This is a chance for people to start fresh somewhere. Somewhere safe. <gasps> hey, guys. You should see this. What are you doing in our house? You really shouldn't be here. Well, I'm delighted to be joined now by British actor Nell Hudson, who is one of the film's stars and who some of you may also know for playing Nancy Skerritt in the ITV period drama Victoria. Nell, good afternoon. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. Well, I'm I'm, I'm a little bit shaken after those two trailers, if I'm honest, you Nell. Know. <laughs> I hadn't heard the audio trailer for the film before. They've done a really good job. It's very, like... Uh, the plot of the film, but without giving anything away. Without giving too much <laughs> away. Now, what did you think when the part came up? Were you a fan of horror? Did you think, oh, yes, brilliant? Absolutely. I'm a big horror fan. I love horror films and always have scary stories. Do it for me. Um, I'm more into kind of like the paranormal horror films, so yes. ghosts and haunted houses, than I am into gore. But obviously, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a very iconic kind of behemoth of the horror genre. So it was incredibly exciting to be offered the role, yeah. Had you watched the original when you were offered the role or, or and did you watch it as part of your preparation for the for the role? I hadn't. It was so notoriously horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Even as a horror fan, I hadn't dared to to actually watch that one. But as soon as I got this part, obviously I watched the original. You couldn't not really. Um, and was suitably horrified and disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> it is but, hor horrifying. Yeah. I mean, I can see also, though, why it is so historic and why it got banned in so many countries and had such a kind of furore around it. Tell us, a little, tell us a little bit about this film, because, of course, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre has been revisited uh, a few mm -hmm. times, but this film on Netflix, this is meant to be a direct sequel from the 1974 film. So tell us what you can about this film, obviously without giving the plot away. Sure. Um, so I haven't actually seen the sort of films in between the original Texas Chainsaw of 1974 and yeah. the film that we have now made. Um, for that very reason, because we are making, we have made a direct sequel, I kind of didn't want to be distracted by um, extraneous kind of subplots. <laughs> um, but what's special about this one, as you say, is the direct sequel. So it, the original character of Leatherface, as he would be in the world of 2021, uh, amongst millennials and Gen Zs, and the film has a really fresh and current feel to it. And it's sort of a really interesting juxtaposition between that original character and the world we now live in. There is a wonderful uh, image of uh, Leatherhead making an appearance in the trailer, so I'm not giving anything away. But mm. as you said, Gen Z is very much, uh, very much present in the film. And of course, mm. when the first time they see him, they all get their phones out and try, yeah. <laughs> try and film him, which, yeah. uh, which of course is quite typical. But tell us a little bit about the atmosphere on the set, Nell. When you first saw uh, Leatherface appear on the set how, how did you feel and, and how does the atmosphere on the set sort of mirror what we see on screen I first saw Leatherface's mask disembodied from him I saw it on a sort of props table and was very creeped out by it just sort of <laughs> sitting there on its own unanimated um and Mark who plays Leatherface in the film is six foot seven in real life so him wearing that mask is is quite a sight. Um, and in terms of set mirroring life, Mark very 
kind of generously kept a little bit of distance from me and the three other kind of younger members of the main cast in order to kind of maintain an air of sort of ominousness <laughs> around himself. Um, so even though, you know, he was a lovely guy, we sort of never got too close and maintained that kind of like, you know, unfamiliarity with him. And what about filming horror films? I can imagine that you're going to be spending a lot of time after wrapping filming, cleaning off sticky sort of blood substitutes that uh, you're drenched with during the filming. Yes, absolutely. That stuff is very hard to get off. <laughs> I had it slightly luckier than my co-star Sarah Yarkin, who I think at one point in the film gets covered in a leaked sewage pipe. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> so I was dealing with fake blood, but at least I didn't have to deal with fake excrement as well. <laughs> oh, sorry, my dog's barking. <laughs> <laughs> I, could see, I could see him in the background there. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, now, you've been extremely busy because you've also written a novel in the midst of all this, your first novel. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I've always written. My mum's a writer and I sort of knew that you could do writing as a job because of that, whereas I didn't know you could actually do acting as a job. So I always loved acting, but I was like, wait, this is, you get, you can get paid for this? This is amazing. <laughs> um, so I've always kind of written on the side and um, yeah, I started writing this book whilst filming Victoria actually, which you mentioned. Um, and it sort of grew and grew over the course of filming that show. Cause I was spending so much time traveling and kind of waiting around in my trailer <laughs> as is the truth of being an actor. But yeah, it, it kind of, it just sort of happened organically. And then when lockdown happened, it was the perfect opportunity to finish it. And yeah, it's coming out in June. I'm very excited to share it with the world. So can you write when you are trapped in your trailer for those interminable hours that actors have to endure of sort of getting to set and sort of just waiting <laughs> and waiting and waiting? Can you have the sort of mental discipline to sit down and, and write? That's really impressive. Thank you. I don't know if I would anymore. Right. <laughs> I did What's time. changed? I don't know. I think the luxury of having all that time in lockdown. I mean, I probably could if I had to, but now these I'm writing my next book at the moment and I have these lovely days where, you know, I get up early and I treat it like a sort of nine to five. And the idea of going back to sort of writing in those kind of stolen moments in a trailer, it does. Yeah, it's not that appealing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, I'm kind of yeah impressed with my past self for getting on with it. Uh, I'm, I'll tell you, I'm very impressed. Uh, <laughs> Nell, uh, we've got seconds left, uh, but I'm going to ask you the same question I've been asking all the listeners because we've been doing this feature uh, about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So what is your scariest horror film? And I'm going to be a bit mean and say you can't say the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You've got to pick a different one. <laughs> I think the scariest horror film is The Ring. Yes, that's my one as well. I, I, it destroyed it's me. Over that one. <laughs> it destroyed me. And I had a friend, Nell, who was sort of, she was quite short and had long dark hair. And once she sort of put all her hair in front of her face and it still sort of freaked me out. It, uh, it, it's a very, very scary film. Well, it made us all afraid of our TVs. Yes, so it cool. did. <laughs> It did. Uh, well, look, uh, I love the look of the the new film. Definitely going to give it uh, give it a watch uh, because it looks like a good fun and it looks like the people who've made it. Uh, who perhaps we didn't talk enough about, but uh, David Blue Garcia. All these people are proper big horror legends, so I'm sure they have treated uh, this film with the the respect for the 1974 film. So, Nell, uh, thank you so much for giving us your time and uh, very good luck with the book and your future book as well. Thank you so much. Cheers. Uh, that's Nell Hudson, who is uh, the star of, uh, one of the stars, I should say, of the new Netflix uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is available uh, on Netflix as of yesterday, I believe. So you can, uh, there you go. If you've got nothing to do this Saturday night, stay at home and scare the bejesus out of yourself and the rest of your family. Uh, plenty of you... Uh...